What's up, people? It's your boy Jatua. I'm here today in Kerbal Space Program. Now, I've been trying to devise a method to land on Duna that was um, that was going to be inexpensive and also was going to work as a glide down landing in this very thin atmosphere. Of course, the problem being gliding down on a razor-thin atmosphere is not really a fantastic thing. You'd think that you could just throw a ton of wings at it, but after a while of throwing tons of wings at it, it's no longer an efficient and cost-effective method of landing on Duna. So, that being said, I've decided to kind of do it, kind of learn from the lessons that I've used when we were doing the Duna combat and using a propeller to add some lift. So that should give me the ability to translate electrical, all the surplus of electrical uh, charge that I have on this craft into lift, which should allow me to then gently glide down to the surface and then use my one electric uh, remaining propeller as a landing, uh, as a landing propeller. So I'm hoping that will work out. It's going to be a little touch and go sometimes, but hopefully this will work out. So here is our main craft here. You'll see we have a bunch of solar panels, all the good things we need to make this work. And hopefully it will. <laughs> Enjoy the RCS wads here because we're not going to have that for a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and ditch this rear here. And we need to switch that up. Okay. All right. So as that goes away into the distance, we need to go to our other propeller and cut this. We need to deploy this propeller and we also need to inflate our heat shield. Okay. So we're coming in hot. Here we go as we watch everything else disappear into the distance and take a few moments to admire the textures that were used on this heat shield as they are fantastic textures and very detailed ones at that and watch the skybox in the distance raise with the with Kerbal Kerbal rising in our on our horizon as we come around the uh, the arches of Duna, not really an arch, but the the curvature of Duna. All right, so here we go. We are ready to test this out. So off the back, I need to keep an eye on this electric folding propeller because I can't activate it until I'm in the atmosphere. If I do, it's not going to do a dang thing, to be honest. And there's also another one in here on the main craft itself to assist it with its landing. So, hopefully this will work out. Everything has to detach perfectly for this to work out. And I have to not spill anything over here as well. So, we're coming on down. We just got to punch through this atmosphere. This heat shield should do the trick. This is all wings that you're seeing here. All these wings are just to give me a bit of lift. So hopefully it will all generate a decent amount of lift for this uh, insertion. Right now we are straight arrow on in and hoping that this will work. This actually looks pretty cool. <laughs> I love... I love looking at Duna. Duna is beautiful. Uh, Lathe is wonderful, but Duna is beautiful. And I can't just send blimps over to Adventure on this place. Uh, I've been trying to send over several flying, uh, several gliders, uh, several powered gliders. Um, none of which have worked exceptionally well in this really thin atmosphere. You will have to spend electrical units in order, electrical charge in order to be able to fly here properly. And of course that increases the cost and increases the weight, increases everything in order to do this properly. All right, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna count on anything else. We're just gonna count on this lift on this uh, thrust and we have some flow coming back from these engines which means I can cut them on because we needed to make sure we had FS coolant 
All right, so now we're actually coming in pretty slow. Um, I can actually speed things up here and watch the terrain actually come into view. Uh, watching my altitude over terrain, we're we're under seven now, six, and five thousand. 4,000, okay. I can see the ground scatter coming into view. Continuing to slow down. That inflatable heat shield does a great job of slowing us down. Okay, let's cut all this on. Now you see right now, if I pull up on my throttle, it's not gonna do a dang thing. I have to cut up this engine and carefully carefully adjust this so that I am not overpowering my descent oh that's looking beautiful and you see just putting it on there it gives it a little hinge upwards so now we're actually gliding in and using some of our spare electrical charge to do so so we're gonna keep coming on down and once we're close enough, we're gonna detach everything you see here and our little rover is gonna be on the inside. Our little, our little probe is gonna be on the inside ready to uh, do what it needs to do. So hopefully this goes well. We just, this does not have any landing wheels at all. This is just the insertion craft. And it looks like it's doing rather well. So I can just adjust the thrust here and that will let me glide this out further or less. And even it's been proven that even on Mars you could use a propeller. Of course you would have to use a pretty large propeller because the atmosphere. So <laughs> that would be a bit of a eh, maybe, maybe, maybe not thing. So I mean if you wanted to do so, go for it, but you probably want to make it collapsible and you probably want to test the hell out of it because it's going to be very questionable in the long run. And then who knows, you know, what's going to happen in that entire trip that it's taking from Earth to Mars. Something can definitely go wrong and that propeller may not deploy and then you're going to end up with a nice litho break at the end. It's not exactly what you, you don't want to... You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. <laughs> so, so far, we're still doing pretty good. Slowing down still. So, once we get to a decent location, I'm going to slow this down a bit more. And, uh, actually, I can do that just now. I can start to slow us down. just leveling this one out let's take a little dive first all right so we're gonna come down a little faster because right now we're going down really slow we're just edging ourselves down right now we're in survival we could actually survive this right now uh, if we landed properly uh, the rover I have in there has a few contingency plans so it could potentially survive this but I want to come in with the most gentle landing I can and then just use Duna's thin atmosphere to glide myself slowly and steadily down. Matter of fact, I kind of want to turn off this other engine because it's pulling me forward, but I'll leave that one on because it's not, it's not hurting us too bad because a lot of its thrust directions are covered, so it's not going to be able to hurt us. Uh, so we're coming, I can see, I can see the stain on the ground. It's beautiful. Okay. So we need to balance ourselves out. So let's go ahead and lift ourselves up a bit. All right. Looking good. Whoa. Whoa. All right, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. way too much. All right, so we have a lot of lift, as you can see here. 
and that lift is actually going to hurt us right now. We actually could glide this out for a long time, I can see here, but that's not what our goal is. We want to land. So I'm going to nose it down a bit, and at the last moment, I'm going to then... I think I can work with this propeller being right there, so I want to get it out of the way. Okay, doing good. Nice and easy. And what I'm going to do is pull up and then detach everything and hope that this will work. All right, looking good. Looking good. Looking good. All right. Let's go ahead and Let's see if this works. Shut that down. All right, here's our little rover. He needs to kind of get out of there. Oh no. Oh no. Oh! And the front of it collapsed in in the most dramatic fashion ever. <laughs> that was not how it was supposed to work. So this time around, I did not activate the internal engine. I just have the lift engine running. So it's gonna give me a bit more lift without generating any forward velocity, which is what I don't want. I don't want that forward velocity, but I want the actual lift itself. So this is going to be our best case scenario if I can get this to work this time around. I landed it the first time I tested it, and then that was the second time you saw me just crash it. So I really, uh, we'll see if it's two for, th if it's two for three. I'll, I'll take two for three. I'll take two for three. <laughs> All right. We are going really slow this time around. Like, this is mega slow. Uh, I mean, it's cool. I will definitely take that slow speed. But this is really slow. And the more I power up this lift engine, the slower I'm going to go, the more we're going to glide this out to a successful, easy, soft touchdown that we can scrape together. And hopefully this will work out. All right. So, so right now we're looking really, this is, this is looking really good. This is looking really good. 40 meters per second dropping steadily. Vertical speeds under seven. And come on. Somehow, somehow, in all of that, we survived. <laughs> that was awesome. The only thing we lost was our internal propeller, which I could give or take for that, because I really didn't want that on there anyway. Wow, that worked out. And I'm really thrilled, because I got our little rover here mostly intact. <laughs> we can roof away. <laughs> that was a scary landing, but it worked. It definitely worked. It was just get it slow enough so it's survivable. And then the rest just collapses around it. So I will definitely take that. Uh, I could definitely do a lot better, but it is what it is. And this is a fantastic view we now have to roll around on Duna. And we can just collect all the science we want. Let's get our 
just get our, our antenna out, extend. All right. Now we're in contact with our blimp and our satellite, and we should be good to go. Well, let's see where our bounce is going. Big Com. So we're, we're actually communicating back with Big Com, which is around, uh, which is actually around Kerbin. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good bounce. That's a pretty good signal. I mean, we also have a bigger antenna hidden in here. So as you can see here, we we're just gonna say we cut a hole in this one, and uh, and we're just poking through. <laughs> Since there's no real cargo bay, there's no circular cargo bay, which I believe is a major oversight. There should be a circular cargo bay. You shouldn't have to rely on these little service bays. That's uh, a major oversight in my opinion. There needs to be a Mark One. But anyhow, this works, and I'm thrilled. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, hit that like button, drop me in the comment, let me know what you think, and I hope to catch you guys in the next video. So gliding down on Duna is possible. You want to use a lift, you can use a lift propeller or a lifting engine to kind of hinge your aircraft on the front or back, so that way, if it's on the back, you know, you can have it pushed down on the front, you can have it lift up. So as you adjust your speed, it's bouncing your aircraft out to a nice gentle glide down. If I had wheels, it would have been a problem, but I didn't put wheels on that craft. So, it is possible, it's doable! I don't know if it would work on the insertion into Mars, or if it would work in the Martian atmosphere, but it'll work on Duna, and I'm thrilled. <laughs> I'll catch you guys in the next video. It's your boy Jatuan, I'm out. Peace. I'm trying to see where the keys are so I can see if I can give you a nice 360 view of Mars. Or Duna. <laughs> Peace. Oh, wow. Well, that's another one hell of a way to land. All right. <laughs> Wow, that was exciting. Okay. Woo. Well.